In the last part of the series, part 40, we saw Yahshua give the Last Supper, in which we were told to do it in remembrance of him. We then saw Judas take a bride with the Pharisees to deliver Yahshua to be killed. We later saw Yahshua give a new commandment to love one another as he has loved us. As we move along through the gospel, the complete understanding of the new covenant really starts to form. We are saved through the blood of Yahshua his blood that was shed in the blood of the new covenant. He is the Passover lamb that we place over our lives that redeems us from the bondage of sin. Now before he is betrayed, Yahshua told his disciples a great deal that needs to be understood by us all. It is found in John chapters 14 through chapter 17. These words are something I encourage everyone to read consistently and definitely have a strong grasp of what he is communicating. We will jump right into it and understand what he is trying to tell us. I will stop at certain times to clarify certain points, but much of what he is saying is self-explanatory. I'm sure it will bless you. Let's review his words. Let's begin. So Yahshua and his disciples are still in the room where they just took Passover. Judas just left out to go betray him. While he was gone, Yahshua continued teaching saying, Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in Yahweh. Believe also in me. In my father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would not have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you to myself, that where I am, there you may be also. And where I go, you know, and the way you know. Thomas said to him, Adonai, we do not know where you are going. How can we know the way? Yahshua said to him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. So let's cover that right there. Yahshua told us to believe in him. He is going to prepare a place for us. This is extremely comforting to know. He didn't leave us and have us wondering would he come back or not to take care of us. He told us he's preparing a place for us, and I'm so happy and excited about it. Now, don't mistake mansions for the multi-million dollar mansions of the elite today. A proper translation for mansion would really be dwelling place. A permanent secure place for us to dwell when we are with him. Could they be huge mansions? Maybe, or maybe not. I know many of us like to say, I may not have a mansion on earth, but I will get a mansion in heaven. What's important is that he is preparing a place for us all to dwell, and it will be spectacular. That's what's important. He says he will come again and receive us. It's important you never forget. He is the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through him. So if someone presents another way to make it to the Father without him, they are taking you to Satan. He continues saying, If you had known me, you would have known my Father also. And from now on, you know him and have seen him. Philip said to him, Adonai, Show us the Father, and it is sufficient for us. Yahshua said to him, Have I been with you so long, and yet you have not known me, Philip? He who has seen me has seen the Father. So how can you say, Show us the Father? Do you not believe that I am in the Father, and the Father in me? The words that I speak to you, I do not speak of my own authority, but the Father who dwells in me does his works. Believe in me that I am in the Father, and the Father in me or else believe me because of the works themselves. Yahshua came to reveal the Father. To know Yahshua is to know the Father. That's why 1 John chapter 2, verse 23 says, Whoever denies the Son does not have the Father either. He who acknowledges the Son has the Father also. Yahshua says, Believe me that I am in the Father and the Father in me. So please believe him. It obviously took Philip and Thomas a lot to understand this as well but their confusion allows you to be reassured and confirmed. Continuing speaking, he said, Most assuredly, I say to you, he who believes in me, the works that I do, he will do also, and greater works than these he will do, because I go to my Father, and whatever you ask in my name, that I will do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If you ask anything in my name, I will do it. Whatever you ask in his name, he will do, that the Father may be glorified. 
Many people don't understand why we pray in the name of Yahshua. This is why. We go to the Father and ask in the name of Yahshua. We must always remember that he does answer prayers, but so that the Father may be glorified. So make his kingdom more of the priority than your own earthly desires. Continuing on, if you love me, keep my commandments, and I will pray the Father, and he will give you another helper, that he may abide with you forever. The Spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it neither sees him nor knows him, but you know him, for he dwells with you and will be in you. I will not leave you orphans, I will come to you. When he left, he did not leave us without help. He left us with a helper that abides in us forever. This is the Holy Spirit. The world cannot receive him, but believers can, and he dwells in us and stays with us. There was so much to say about the Holy Spirit. So before I made this video, I made a study on the Holy Spirit for everyone because he is something you must understand. Please watch. Okay, continuing on. A little while longer and the world will see me no more. But you will see me, because I live. You will live also. At that day you will know that I am in my Father, and you in me, and I in you. He who has my commandments and keeps them, it is he who loves me, and he who loves me will be loved by my Father, and I will love him and manifest myself to him. Judas, not Iscariot, said to him, Adonai, how is it that you will manifest yourself to us? and not to the world. Yahshua answered and said to him, If anyone loves me, he will keep my word, and my Father will love him, and we will come to him and make our home with him. He who does not love me does not keep my words, and the word which you hear is not mine, but the Father's who sent me. This is very simple, but important to understand, so I'm just going to repeat it and paraphrase. If anyone loves him, he will keep his word. So read his word and follow it. If you do so, the Father will love you, and they will come to you and make their home with you. Those who do not love him do not keep his word, his commands. This is not the Ten Commandments like many people falsely preach. It's all of the commands Yahshua has given since the beginning of the Gospels. So follow his words and live by them, so you can show you love him. People following the Ten Commandments but do not keep his words, do not love him. Follow him. These things I have spoken to you while being present with you. But the helper, the Ruach HaKodesh, whom the Father will send in my name, he will teach you all things and bring to your remembrance all things that I have said to you. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you, not as the world gives do I give to you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. You have heard me say to you, I am going away and coming back to you. If you loved me, you would rejoice because I said, I am going to the Father. For my Father is greater than I. And now I have told you before it comes, that when it does come to pass, you may believe. I will no longer talk much with you, for the ruler of this world is coming, and he has nothing in me, but that the world may know that I love the Father. And as the Father gave me commandment, so I do. Arise. Let us go from here. Yahshua leaving us physically is very sad, but the gift he left us is great. The Holy Spirit now teaches us all things. Be led by him. Again, watch the video about the Holy Spirit to understand more. He continued talking saying, I am the true vine and my father is the vine dresser. Every branch in me that does not bear fruit, he takes away. And every branch that bears fruit, he prunes that it may bear more fruit. You are already clean because of the word which I have spoken to you. Abide in me and I in you. As a branch cannot bear fruit of itself unless it abides in the vine, neither can you unless you abide in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. He who abides in me and I in him bears much fruit, for without me you can do nothing. If anyone does not abide in me, he is cast out as a branch and is withered, and they gather them and throw them into the fire, and they are burned. If you abide in me, and my words abide in you, you will ask what you desire, and that shall be done for you. By this my Father is glorified, that you bear much fruit, so you will be my disciples. 
We are his branches. For a branch to produce fruit, it must abide, which means to dwell, to stay, to settle in. The way to abide in the Messiah is to obey. A believer who lovingly abides, obeys, the word of Elohim, produces good fruit. As the Father loved me, I also have loved you. Abide in my love. If you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in his love. These things I have spoken to you, that my joy may remain in you, and that your joy may be full. This is my commandment, that you love one another as I have loved you. Greater love has no one than this, than to lay down one's life for his friends. You are my friends if you do whatever I command you. No longer do I call you servants, for a servant does not know what his master is doing. But I have called you friends. For all things that I have heard from my father, I have made known to you. You did not choose me, but I chose you and appointed you that you should go and bear fruit and that your fruit should remain, that whatever you ask of the father in my name, he may give you. These things I command you that you love one another. He said this before, and we have discussed this in other parts. Please just remember it and live as though you believe it. He now says, if the world hates you, you know that it hated me before it hated you. If you are of the world, the world would love its own. Yet because you are not of the world, but I chose you out of the world, therefore the world hates you. Remember the word that I said to you, a servant is not greater than his master. If they persecuted me, they will also persecute you. If they kept my word, they will keep yours also. But all these things they will do to you for my name's sake because they do not know him who sent me. If I had not come and spoken to them, they would have no sin, but now they have no excuse for this sin. He who hates me hates my father also. If I had not done among them the works which no one else did, they would have no sin, but now they have seen and also hated both me and my father. But this happened that the word might be fulfilled which is written in their law. They hated me without a cause. Okay, this is something that needs to be understood. For some reason today, many churches teach that you can be a true believer in Yahshua and still get along with the world. If you are a true believer in Yahshua and the world still seems to embrace you, there is a compromise somewhere. The world hated Yahshua. It will hate you too. No one is greater than Yahshua. So if a person who claims to love Yahshua is loved by a strong majority of this world, they are promoted by the media and other entertainment structures of this world, there are major compromises without a doubt. Have the proper expectation. True believers of Yahshua will be hated by the world, and depending on where you are and the time and history you're in, you may or may not be persecuted. It comes with the territory. But Yahshua told us they would hate us like they hated him. Simply put, the world hated him, so it should not be surprised that the world hates his followers. Then he said, But when the Helper comes, whom I shall send to you, from the Father, the Spirit of truth who proceeds from the Father, he will testify of me, and you also will bear a witness, because you have been with me from the beginning. The Helper has come. He is the Holy Spirit. Just be led by him. Be led by the Holy Spirit. Continuing, These things I have spoken to you, that you should not be made to stumble. They will put you out of the synagogues. Yes, the time is coming that whoever kills you will think that he offers Elohim service. And these things they will do to you because they have not known the Father nor me. But these things I have told you, that when the time comes, you may remember that I told you of them. And these things I did not say to you at the beginning because I was with you. Again, remember the world will hate you. You may find this hate in your own churches because you want to stand up for his truth. Or you may find it with your own family because you want to preach the truth and they don't want to hear it. Just remember John chapter 16, verse 1 through 4, anytime this happens to you. He told you this, so you remember it. Continuing, But now I go away to him who sent me, and none of you ask me, where are you going? But because I have said these things to you, sorrow has filled your heart. Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is to your advantage that I go away. For if I do not go away, the helper will not come to you. But if I depart, I will send him to you. 
And when he has come, he will convict the world of sin and of righteousness and of judgment concerning sin because they do not believe in me, concerning righteousness because I go to my Father and you will see me no more, concerning judgment because the ruler of this world is judged. I still have many things to say to you, but you cannot bear them now. However, when he, the spirit of truth has come, he will guide you into all truth. For he will not speak on his own authority, but whatever he hears, he will speak, and he will tell you things to come. He will glorify me, for he will take of what is mine and declare it to you. All things that the Father has are mine. Therefore, I said that he will take of mine and declare it to you. What a blessing. Thank you, Father. The Holy Spirit is a big part of his teaching over these three chapters. Again, if he did not leave, we would not receive the gift of the Ruach HaKodesh. There is no greater gift. Understand the Ruach HaKodesh. Continuing on, a little while and you will not see me. And again, a little while and you will see me because I go to the Father. Then some of the disciples said among themselves, what is this that he says to us? A little while, you will not see me. And again, a little while, and you will see me. And because I go to the Father. They said, therefore, what is this that he says? A little while. We do not know what he's saying. Now, Yahshua knew that they desired to ask him. And he said to them, are you inquiring among yourselves about what I said? A little while, and you will not see me. And again, a little while, and you will see me. Most assuredly, I say to you that you will weep and lament, but the world will rejoice, and you will be sorrowful, but your sorrow will be turned into joy. A woman, when she is in labor, has sorrow because her hour has come, but as soon as she has given birth to the child, she no longer remembers the anguish, for joy that a human being has been born into the world. Therefore you now have sorrow, but I will see you again, and your heart will rejoice and your joy no one will take from you. And in that day, you will ask me nothing. Most assuredly, I say to you, whatever you ask the Father in my name, he will give you. Until now, you have asked nothing in my name. Ask, and you will receive, that your joy may be full. These things I have spoken to you in figurative language, but the time is coming when I will no longer speak to you in a figurative language, but I will tell you plainly about the Father. In that day, you will ask in my name, and I do not say to you that I shall pray the Father for you. For the Father himself loves you, because you have loved me, and have believed that I came forth from Yahweh. I came forth from the Father, and have come into the world. Again, I leave the world and go to the Father. His disciples said to him, See, now you are speaking plainly, and using no figure of speech. Now we are sure that you will know all things, and have no need that anyone should question you. By this we believe that you came forth from Yahweh. Yahshua answered them, Do you now believe? Indeed the hour is coming, yes, has now come, that you will be scattered, each to his own, and will leave me alone. And yet I am not alone, because the Father is with me. These things I have spoken to you, that in me you may have peace. In the world you will have tribulation, but be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. Everything he said here was plain and simple to understand. Again, we just need to read it. What I want you to remember is to have the right expectation of what your belief will bring you. In the world, you will have tribulation. Be of good cheer. Yahshua has overcome the world. So believe in him. So continuing into the last chapter, Yahshua spoke these words, lifted up his eyes to heaven and said, Father, the hour has come. Glorify your son that your son also may glorify you, as you have given him authority over all flesh, that he shall give eternal life to as many as you have given him. And this is eternal life, that they may know you, the only true Elohim, and Yahshua the Messiah whom you have sent. I have glorified you on earth. I have finished the work which you have given me to do. And now, O Father, glorify me together with yourself, with the glory which I had with you before the world was. This is what Yahshua wants for us, that we know the Father and Him. He has finished the work the Father sent Him for. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. 
Continuing, I have manifested your name to the men whom you've given me out of the world. They were yours. You gave them to me, and they have kept your word. Now they have known that all things which you have given me are from you. For I have given them the words which you have given me, and they have received them, and have known surely that I came forth from you, and they have believed that you sent me. I pray for them. I do not pray for the world, but for those whom you have given me. For they are yours, and all mine are yours, and yours are mine, and I am glorified in them. Now I am no longer in the world, but these are in the world, and I come to you. Holy Father, keep through your name those whom you have given me, that they may be one as we are. While I was with them in the world, I kept them in your name. Those whom you gave me I have kept, and none of them is lost except the son of perdition that the scripture might be fulfilled. But now I come to you, and these things I speak in the world, that they may have my joy fulfilled in themselves. I have given them your word, and the world has hated them, because they are not of the world, just as I am not of the world. I do not pray that you should take them out of the world, but you should keep them from the evil one. They are not of the world, just as I am not of the world. Sanctify them by your truth. Your word is truth. As you sent me into the world, I also have sent them into the world. And for their sakes, I sanctify myself, that they also may be sanctified by the truth. After I read this, I think of 1 John chapter 2, verse 15 through 17. It says, Do not love the world or the things in the world. If anyone loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life, it is not of the Father, but is of the world. And the world is passing away, and the lust of it. But he who does the will of Elohim abides forever. Live with this understanding. For more understanding on this, please watch the study I have on this topic. Yahshua does not want us out of the world. If we were not here, the world would be lost. He just wants to keep us from the evil one. Don't engage in behavior that makes this hard to do. He lastly says in this chapter, I do not pray for these alone, but also for those who will believe in me through their word, that they all may be one, as you, Father, are in me, and I in you, that they also may be one in us, that the world may believe that you sent me, and the glory which you gave me I have given them, that they may be one just as we are one, I in them, and you in me that they may be made perfect in one, and that the world may know that you have sent me and have loved them as you have loved me. Father, I desire that they also whom you gave me may be with me where I am, that they may behold my glory which you have given me. For you loved me before the foundation of the world. O righteous Father, the world has not known you, but I have known you, and these have known that you have sent me, And I have declared to them your name, and will declare it, that the love which you loved me may be in them, and I in them. This is just beautiful. This is his prayer for us. Not much to say except, thank you, Yahshua. Okay, that was a lot of doctrine from him. Here's what you need to know from this part of the series. 1. He told us he is preparing a place for us, where there are many mansions. A proper translation for mansion would really be dwelling place, a permanent secure place for us to dwell when we are with him. What's important is that he is preparing a place for us all to dwell. 2. It's important you never forget, he is the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through him. So if someone presents another way to make it to the Father without him, they are taking you to Satan. 3. Yahshua came to reveal the Father. To know Yahshua is to know the Father. 4. Whatever you ask in his name, he will do that the Father may be glorified. So many people don't understand why we pray in the name of Yahshua. This is why we go to the Father and ask in the name of Yahshua. 5. When he left, he did not leave us without help. He left us with a helper that abides in us forever. This is the Holy Spirit. The world cannot receive him. But believers can, and he dwells in us and stays with us. 
Please watch my study on the Holy Spirit for more understanding. 6. If anyone loves him, he will keep his word. So read his word and follow it. If you do so, the Father will love you, and they will come to you and make their home with you. 7. People following the Ten Commandments, but then don't keep his word, do not love him. Follow Yahshua and keep his words. They are all in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. 8. Yahshua leaving us physically is very sad, but the gift he left us with is great. The Holy Spirit now teaches us all things. Be led by him. 9. We are his branches. For a branch to produce more fruit, it must abide, which means to dwell, to stay, to settle in. The way to abide in the Messiah is to obey. A believer who lovingly abides, obeys, the word of Elohim, produces good fruit. 10. The world hated Yahshua. It will hate you too. No one is greater than Yahshua. So if a person who claims to love Yahshua is loved by a strong majority of this world, or they are promoted by the media and other entertainment structures of this world, they are major compromises without a doubt. 11. If the world hated Yahshua, it should not be a surprise the world hates his followers. 12. In the world you will have tribulation, but be of good cheer. Yahshua has overcome the world, so believe in him. 13. This is what Yahshua wants for us, that we know the Father and him. He has finished the work the Father sent him for. The Bible is the ultimate instruction book, and the Gospels really hold what we need to be able to live through Yahshua. In order to be ready for Yahshua and to be his follower, you must follow his words. Many will tell you that they believe he died for their sins, but they won't submit to living through his words. This is how we show that we love him. These chapters are absolutely beautiful, but what really is important in these chapters is abiding in him through his words, listening and obeying our king. You are not a believer if you are not submitting to his will. The disciples didn't follow Yahshua, but do their own thing while they were with him. Were they perfect while following him? Absolutely not. They made mistakes along the way, but they never took away their submission to him. So it's important that you do not do it as well. You may get confused and have troubles along the way, but he always must be in the driver's seat. The second thing you need to receive from this is the power of the Holy Spirit. Again, I had to make a video that preceded this just to make sure you understand just how powerful the Holy Spirit is and what his role is in your life. Yahshua really emphasized his importance. This is who you must be led by today. Your pastors are just shepherds. Videos like this are just guides, but nothing takes place of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit teaches you all things and will lead you into all righteousness. So learn about him and in all things, make sure you are led by him. Do this and you will make it to the finish line and be with the Father on his day. Please receive that. Okay, thanks again for watching. If this has blessed you, please do not forget to like it and share it with others. If you have not already done so, do not forget to subscribe to this channel. I upload every Friday. As always, I'd like to thank all of you who support this ministry. You know who you are. Your contributions truly bless me. I'm always humbled by your support. Thank you for listening to Yahweh's call on your heart. Okay, thanks again everyone for watching. I love you all.